You know, I usually only really talk about cartoons on this channel, but I've always loved video games. There is so much work and passion that goes into them. Some of these we consider timeless works of art. And I guess that's really fitting that the first video game related video I do is on a Valve game. What can you say about Team Fortress 2? Coming from Valve, it's one of their best. Originally releasing in 2007 with the Orange Box, which was a bundle of other Valve games coming out from that time, it's responsible for building such huge community over the years. It's one of Valve's best games. I mean, 2007 was 15 years ago, and people still play this game daily. You know you got something great when your game is that old and the community around it is just as strong as ever. And coming from Valve, it has that amazing design philosophy they were so well known for back then. TF2 is so carefully constructed in its design, it's a very polished game when it comes to skill. With all the inside jokes, the huge skill ceiling, rocket jumping is the most rocket science advanced witchcraft shit I've ever seen, how the fuck do you guys do this? Why is Team Fortress 2 so beloved? I mean, no ordinary game just gets this way overnight, especially when you kill yourself and come back and then kill yourself again. Is it perhaps the huge amount of skill that goes into each character, or is it perhaps the humor? Many have tried to replicate this kind of success. Why do people still play this game to this very day, and why is it always a big deal when there is a possibility of an update happening? Let's start with how it started. Let's go back to the far 90s. Too far, let's move up a little bit. Quake. It was the 90s. I think animation went through its own innovations, much like how video games did in the 90s. Honestly, you can probably say that about any medium in the 90s. It's important to start with where TF2 came from, because it highlights an important time in gaming. Quake was made by the same people who did Doom, and Doom was the granddad of first-person shooters. Everything about TF2 can be traced back to Quake, and then it can be traced back to Doom. To be fair, I was never around at this time, I never grew up with these games, so I can't say firsthand how groundbreaking these games were for their time, and if I did go into it, this video would be multiple hours long. But what I can say is we can hand it to these games for how revolutionary they were for this genre. So much so, Quake's source code was open to the public for other developers to mess with. And this is where Team Fortress came from. Team Fortress was a mod for Quake. It was one of the earliest games to adopt a team-based class system, relying heavily on team cooperation for its gameplay. This was basically the groundwork for TF2. Later on, the Australian team of developers actually went on to work for Valve after this. They actually ported Team Fortress into another game engine that is what became Team Fortress Classic. Now what game did that engine belong to? Let's go more specifically to 1998. There was this new video game company, one going by Valve. You just heard of this crazy new game they just made. An FPS one would call it. One that was the first to mesh a narrative with gameplay. This game was called Half-Life. Good morning, and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. It was a genre-defining game. It pushed game design further, it questioned what was possible with narratives in gaming, and it was really the first to do it. Half-Life had the philosophy to tell a story through gameplay. It was the connection of story meeting video game. This was Valve's first game and already they had built a standard. If you played a Valve game, you were getting something of supreme quality. This, in my opinion, was the design philosophy that went into TF2. Starting in 1998, production on TF2 would begin. So what was this sequel of a Quake mod going to look like? Originally they were going to go with a realistic look, opting for a look similar to Half-Life. Of course, over time, this design philosophy changed to what we see in the game. Having the characters be realistic in a heavily class-based team shooter would have caused a few issues. Players not being able to differentiate each class during gameplay. This is a problem Team Fortress Classic had. The game wouldn't stand out, and can you really imagine a game like this lasting a lifetime? 
Honestly, a lot of these games with this look back then aged pretty bad in looks, if I'm being honest. So with that, there was a new design philosophy, putting stylization over everything. This was going to be a class-based team shooter, so they imagined how skilled can a player get at these characters. What is each character about, and why should you care about them? The whole look and feel of the game was so important, it's honestly why it took 9 years to make it. Many, many concept arts were made. They were actually going to go with an alien theme for the game at one point. Then with that, they had it. There were a lot of things that changed from this early trailer, but this was about it. It was a Cold War 1960s-esque style they had created. The silhouettes, the character designs, red versus blue, now this lasts a decade. This was how they created the TF2 Mercs. Now of course I'm sure I've talked about this before in other videos, an artist's job is only half done once you have a design. What does TF2 do with these designs that makes it work? Team Fortress 2, I guess you can definitely say, has a bit of a sense of humor. There is a precedence of inherent silliness about TF2. I mean, you can load into a game, and I guarantee there's always going to be some kind of silliness to it all. The ragdolls, the stupid one-liners, characters screaming. They are all so characterized, and this is best shown in the shorts. I guarantee there's not a single person in gaming who doesn't recognize these characters. They are all so iconic. Every short represents a great aspect of every character, who they are and their playstyles. To Heavy's very simple, I am Heavy Weapons Guy. And cutting to him mowing down enemies. <laughs> you see, Heavy is not just a crazy gunman, he has feelings. He has PhD in Russian literature. He has philosophical thoughts and might just be the smartest on the team. Gun. It is here I realize, wow, this short is actually very smart because that explains his playstyle very well. I didn't understand it for the longest time, but now I get it. Heavy is a straightforward class that relies heavily on his team. It requires the player to think about his approach to make an effective push. The short represents this wonderfully, and yet I'm still physically unable to play heavy. Almost every short does this, to showcasing how annoying a scout can be, to showing how efficient a sniper can be. Scout is like one of my top favorite mains, it's so satisfying to land your shots. You can say the same thing for sniper as well. Now that I'm thinking about it, the scout has a heavy resemblance to the Sham Wow guy. Also, he has a South Boston accent, and his real name is Jeremy, so this confirms my theory that the scout is, in fact, Germa. From Rat Movie. Hey look, buddy. I'm an engineer. What does the engineer short tell you about the engineer, though? Build sentry, kill enemy. I'm an engineer. I see you. What about the dispenser? I'm an engineer. Or the teleporter? That means I solve problems. Oh, he must be a free-to-play engineer. Soldier is definitely a fan favorite. I think he takes the most time to get good at. Oh, he's also insane. And from that day forward, any time a bunch of animals are together in one place, it's called a zoo! I love him. There's just so much to love about the soldier. His constant screaming, being a lovable idiot. This is a bucket. Dear God. There's more. No. You did not read mine. <sighs> Does it say you want the bucket? Yes. Oh, also he's immortal. Seriously, the TF2 lore is probably the most insane thing Valve has ever made. They have done absolutely nothing wrong, but they're blue. <laughs> I've always hated the color blue. You know why? Why? No reason. He might have just a little bit of lead poisoning. Just a little. Meeting the soldier was easy, but it was saying goodbye to the soldier that was the hard part. May you rest, Rick May. We all miss you very much. Demo Man. What makes me a good demo man? If I were a bad demo man, I wouldn't be sitting here discussing it with you now, would I? He's a pirate! Interesting fact, his other eye is actually haunted, and every Halloween they had to fight it. It's the Halloween event. I think Demo Man's short is probably a favorite of mine just because of how loud and drunk he is. They gotta make it out. I'm a black Scottish Cyclops. They got more f and they got the likes of me. For the longest time, he was my least played class, but now I have an appreciation for hitting pipes correctly. You know, that really is the thing with TF2. 
Every character thrives off of precision and good aiming. Most characters in the game use one-shot weapons. That's honestly one of the things that differentiates T2 from other shooters. It's very balanced with how good a player can get. Starting January of 2009 was when these shorts started to get uploaded. Starting with Meet the Heavy, Sniper, Engineer, Scout, Demo Man, and Soldier. Oh, also Sandwich. I mean, if they were going to give any weapon a short, it was an obvious choice. But then things got really cool. Going back on the engineer short, I think they could have done a better job explaining him. It's good, but I think it only represents one specific aspect of engineer. Engineer nowadays has multiple playstyles. What about Battle Engi, the Wrangler, Frontier Justice, the Gunslinger? Then again, Engineer's Defense, those weapons were not in the game yet, so I guess this is just what Engineer was back then. I guess that kind of shows how the game has grown over the years. Meet the Spy feels much more thought out. I see the briefcase is safe. Safe and yeah, sound. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me, did anyone happen to kill a red spy on the way here? No? Then we still have a problem. Spy requires you to really think about your approach in game, think about your enemies, outsmart them. So this makes sense. He is the backstabber. He takes so much more thought to play. I think that's one of the reasons people gravitate to main him. Just the idea of playing a class that betrays your enemies. Backstabbing feels so good to pull off in game. And of course, the short represents this wonderfully. Just when you least expect it, he was always there. And now he's here to f us. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Now what about the medic? He has a really fun short. Most hearts couldn't withstand this voltage. But I'm fairly certain your heart. What was noise? The Medic is, like, probably the most insane out of all the mercenaries. Engineer, the other very smart character of the group, has 11 PhDs. In fact, he's actually the most important character in the lore. So what about Medic? He has no medical training, no medical background, he just likes experimenting on people. What the fuck?! I mean, we are talking about a guy who revives people. He plays God a lot. He outsmarted the devil that one time by separating all the merc souls. You know, explaining the TF2 lore really makes you sound insane, doesn't it? Let's just get back to the short. This short was actually going to be very different from what it actually was. They were originally going to go with an interview type of short like the other ones. It would show how the medic discovered how to heal his team. Of course, they did not go with that, but they still nod to it in the final short. Kill me later. It begins with Scout and Demo wounded, so they die. Meanwhile, Putis and Birdman play Operation, and then they kill the entire enemy team. And that, kids, is why every medic ubers heavy. And only heavy. You stupid motherfucker! Oh man, you would not believe how much this hurts. Archimedes? The, the, the pigeon flew out of me. Oh fuck. And finally, we've made it to Pyro, TF2's most mysterious character. I fear no man, but that thing. There was a lot of build up to this one. I mean, it came just over a year after Meet the Medic and a month before release it was hinted at in a Portal 2 trailer. This was perfect. I mean, it only made sense to do Pyro last as he was the most mysterious of the entire team. Who is the Pyro and what does he look like? Is he a boy or girl? Is he even human for that matter? One 
one shudders to imagine what inhuman thoughts lie behind that mask. What dreams of chronic and sustained cruelty. Ah, so he's a furry. That makes sense. Now this really begs the question, which My Little Pony character is his favorite? I just love these characters so much. All these shorts are just so much fun. Meeting and getting to know all these characters is such a nostalgic blast because it's really the thing that introduced us to the game. This game really did develop over time. The amount of world building and inside jokes, it just makes you want to be part of it. The amount of time it takes playing each character to get good at each one, it makes me love this game and its characters even more. I want to see more of them. It almost makes you wish there was a TV show based off of them. Expiration date is honestly the closest we ever got to getting a TF2 show. What do the TF2 characters do when they aren't on the clock? I mean, we sort of got that in the Telltale game, Poker Night, but that is that really canon? Feel no hand now. <laughs> This 14 minute short feels like what a TV show about these characters would be like. Soldier is the lovable idiot, medic and engineer are basically the smartest of these mercs, and Spy and Scout hate each other. Say that again. Pussy! It's fucking perfect. I mean, I can really see this. Every episode would use that same title card from every Beat the Team short. Now, this is really interesting because this actually somewhat could have happened. Adult Swim ran a commercial for TF2 back in 2013, so it was definitely up in the air for a possibility of it happening. It didn't, though, and it is kind of disappointing. It's really interesting to think about, though. Going off topic, if you really wanted to know more about these characters, the comics are your best bet. The comics give so much more insight on who these characters are. Sniper's origin is fucking insane, and the lore is Again, fucking insane, I keep saying that. Of course, every good game has its downside. I just don't get it. If you look at TF2 today, people still play it, the community is as lively as ever, so why does Valve choose to abandon it? These comics are not finished. TF2 had its last major update back in 2017, the Jungle Inferno update. It was a much needed update for the Pyro that the community was asking for in a vote. Since then, it's been radio silence. The comic hasn't been concluded since then, it's kind of bleak what the future holds for the game. After the TF2 blog teased an update sized update, or a holiday sized update I guess, whatever you guys say, it seems like TF2 is going to get another update at some point, but probably not a major update. A lot of Valve's developers just don't work on this game anymore. It's really sad to think about it, but as is tradition from my videos, I'm going to look on the bright side. <laughs> Good news! We're not dying! We are going to live forever! TF2 will never die. I will always be endlessly impressed by the community around this game. All the SFM animations, the Gary's Mod animations. I'm so happy this game is still around to this day. Like I said, the characters are what dragged me in. I stayed for the game. For this video, I really wanted to get some good clips for background footage, so me and a friend 1v1'd each other in one of those 1v1 servers, and him being a longtime player, and me who loaded up the game for the first time in 2016 on a shitty laptop, I go on to get my ass kicked, but I learned a bit about aiming and I genuinely think I got better at it because of it. Who knows when the game will have another major update, but one thing's for sure. I love this world Valve created, I love this game, and the community is as strong as ever. TF2 has stood the test of time and a lot of that can be attributed to the timeless characters. I love these characters and TF2 will never die.